Welcome to the Maritime Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Wioli. In each episode, we bring you exclusive interviews with maritime professionals, industry experts, and students. Our guests come from different backgrounds, including shipping, yachting, offshore, supply chain, and more. Our goal is to give you all the knowledge you need to succeed in the maritime industry. Hello everyone, welcome back to a new podcast episode. On today in this episode, we are joined by Eric Fort. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in this podcast episode, Eric. Uh, so uh, so you. you are head of procurement at Anthony Vada. Yes. So the listeners know Anthony Vada because I made like two podcasts already with the company. <laughs> so maybe first, can you introduce your, yourself, please? Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, Eric Fort. I'm 36 years old. Um, I've been in procurement for roughly eight and a half years. Always worked in procurement departments, but previously in a different industry. Um, so started my real career over at Stolt, I would say, um, as a tactical buyer, um, then became senior tactical buyer there, uh, which all was related to really knowing what the supplier base is, right? Knowing, really understanding your company's demands really and requirements in terms of their third party supply, the, the upstream supply chain for the vessels. As a senior tactical buyer, that simply added a little bit of responsibility in guiding your colleagues in that same uh, process and in, uh, in those competencies. Then finally turned uh, business process analyst, which really focused and emphasized on the strategy of procurement and trying to implement that through changing the processes. That's interesting. Can you uh, guide us what is procurement? especially in the maritime industry? What is procurement in the maritime industry? Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question because in my view, procurement has always been a little bit less important in the maritime industry than it has been in other industries. And I, that does make sense because uh, if you look at the automotive industry, you see that there's like an 80% yeah. of their upstream supply chain is uh, uh, that makes up like 80% of their spend. So their procurement manager uh, automatically fulfills a very important role uh, that influences their eventual profitability very, very much so. And in logistics, that's more typically around 40%. So uh, I think that procurement for, for shipping is really f firstly has much to do with getting the right type quality goods and services on board at the right time in the right place with vessels moving around, that tends to be a bit of a challenge. Sometimes. Yes, I, uh, I noticed you have a big uh, issue in this world with procurement. Every time I ask, I ask fleet manager, superintendent, they always say this is one of the biggest challenge for them yeah. to, uh, to find this new supplier, to find, uh, you know, spare parts for ships. Uh, do you, did you notice this last couple of years any issues due to maybe COVID-19 or even something? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, so we've had plenty of trade sanctions, uh, plenty of uh, geopolitical influence in, in supply chains that affect pricing, affect the availability of parts, uh, which really hurts our contracts, really hurts the reliability of our operations, which is one of the aspects actually that you want with true mature procurement, you want to address that. Uh, so you want to be aware of all of these uh, risks up front rather than uh, after the fact. That's more easily said than done, of course. Yeah. Sounds a bit theoretical, but it is something that we're moving more towards. So really planning forwards uh, and really know what our critical categories are. Okay. You know, maybe increase stock a little bit on, on materials that you can't get as easily. Okay, yeah? okay quite, quite clear. Uh, talking about procurement, is it like for you more like logistics? Is it like purchasing? What is it? Yeah. That, uh, what, which field are you? Yeah, so realizing what I just said uh, is that procurement in shipping is maybe a little bit more about getting the right uh, services, the right goods in the right place at the right time. That really sounds a lot like logistics, of course. But what we want to do within Anthony Feeder, recognizing uh, the value of procurement also for our company's bottom line, triple bottom line, I might even add, uh, is that it's it's also uh, uh, with its pricing, its quantity, its quality, its behavior, risk, 
And those elements really make up uh, for your cost. So one of these aspects, which we already touched upon, is really understanding what the risk of a certain category in your upstream supply chain really means to your operation. So uh, have you really understood uh, the costs, uh, not just from the item or the service itself, but really not having it, for example, what is the impact of not having it on time? Mm -hmm. And that is becoming more and more important. I think that uh, typically CPOs or, or procurement managers don't lie awake from maybe some bolts and nuts uh, that cost them 16,000 US dollars every year. Whereas maybe, just maybe those bolts are really, really vital to the operation of your vessel and could cost you thousands, okay. hundreds of thousands, millions of US dollars. Okay. Uh, yeah. for, for you, what are the biggest challenges in your job? The biggest challenges in my job? Um, I think the biggest challenges are the volatility of the industry, which are all vessels that can divert from their route at any given moment. Uh, so then I have an operational part of the team that has to really care for making sure that the, we try to adhere to a three monthly storing. So they need to make sure that the vessel gets all of the parts delivered on time. And you can imagine that if you've set up your entire delivery to go to, I don't know, Spain, Tarragona, and the next day, actually, she says, well, maybe we're going to go to the UK T-Sport or something. You would have to organize for that shipment to be moved in uh, in an instant okay. for it to still be on time. Okay. What kind of goods in procurement are you managing? Spare parts, consumables? That's, uh, that's a good question because we're not really fully addressing everything just yet. That would definitely be my ambition to take care of a lot more categories within Anthony Vader. Right now, I think that we're not buying fuel, we're not buying people, uh, we're not buying connectivity. Uh, am I exaggerating now? I think that pretty much everything else we're, we're buying. Uh, so port agent services, but also spare parts, uh, provisions is something that our crewing uh, department actually takes care of. So okay. also provisions we're not doing. Okay, okay, uh, okay. so interesting to know. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. On, let's focus maybe on spare parts because this is the most common in procurement, I would yeah. say. Um, and one of the key challenges the, with the current lead times uh, for spare parts. Yes, yes. Yeah. So can, what can you say about spare parts? Yeah, one of the challenges that has grown in the past couple of years is that you see that the emphasis of companies on working capital has become more and more important to them, uh, really keeping their working capital as low as possible, which has become more and more challenging to the shipping industry because you, it's not uncommon to see lead times of 90 days plus yeah. nowadays, uh, which can be truly challenging uh, to keep everything running and operating, especially if it's about an incident or a breakdown that you want to mitigate, it has just become impossible sometimes to really, uh, your network has to be huge, knowing where uh, emergency supplies are for shipyards or knowing uh, your way around the, uh, the yards that uh, the, the scrap yards uh, where the vessels get beached, you know, maybe you can use part of the recon uh, from those vessels to at least keep your vessel going. It's just become a more and more interesting playing field, really. Okay, yeah. there's something to say about networking, because we yeah. always say network is just more for sales jobs, on, but in procurement, we need a huge network. Equally, what, yes, equally is equally. important, yes. What kind of stakeholders, you say scrapyard, um, yeah. suppliers, of course, but what else? Yeah, yeah. so I think it's really knowing uh, your entire uh, supply base or so knowing all of the types of suppliers that are there, knowing the alternatives to what it is that you're typically using on board, uh, knowing all of those people, staying in touch with them, having some spent with some of these parties to at least have the accessibility uh, to their services, uh, because uh, same as in sales, uh, it, it doesn't work if you just want to do everything on a one-off. Whenever uh, you feel like it, it would work to your benefit, you actually also need to keep these other players uh, in the game and uh, and really focused on what it is that you want to do with your company. So that I think that that's key. And then also uh, what is also challenging for a more niche market uh, shipping company like ourselves is that we're typically not as sizable as our larger uh, counterparts which makes 
supplier relationship management a lot more difficult huh? because that means that we actually have to deploy a lot of time okay. <laughs> to stay in touch with yeah. all of these people and really know that network as well. So it's really quite an investment for us to make. Okay. And do you need, do you need sometimes if the vessel needs a, like a emergency, like spare parts, to contact new suppliers, like always? Yeah. Yeah, that does happen, and that's not really a good spot to be in. So we try to uh, know uh, the, the sailing profiles for our vessels, where they typically go and where we can consolidate uh, from other locations. So even if a vessel maybe doesn't, uh, if, even if we don't have a source in the direct port that the vessel attends, maybe we have something uh, very close by that we can make use of. Uh, but it does happen where you have to, uh, there are situations where you have to quickly add a new supplier, have the stuff uh, okay. supplied, follow up with them. Yeah? Okay. And what are your collaboration with the superintendents, for example? Do you work closely with them or, or yes. the approval it works? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in uh, Anthony Vider, uh, this may have already been touched upon in a previous podcast, but we have like a, what is called a cluster setup where we have an asset manager that has an operational uh, buyer in the team, but also has a crewing manager in the team and a business controller. Uh, and they try to uh, uh, they basically get all of the information of that part of the fleet where the asset manager is actually uh, the asset manager is responsible for and that flows its way back into procurement meetings uh, where we're trying to consolidate this information and come up with the best measures that we can take to help the reliability of the fleet so you work very closely interlinked with vessel managers okay. yeah, which is of course the, of course the core of what it is that we need to do make sure that our ladies keep uh, keep sailing yeah. safely yeah that's <laughs> What can you say of a uh, day in your life? A day in my life is a, is a lot of meetings uh, lately, I think. Uh, and I hope that that will gradually get a little bit less. But it's also, it makes a lot of sense because I only became uh, the manager for the procurement department three, almost four months ago. So that's still uh, relatively uh, recent. Huh? Uh, other than that, the, a day in my life uh, is also uh, uh, working on what, what processes do we currently have and where do we need to tweak, uh, managing the team, uh, making sure that everybody is doing okay and also following up maybe on some of the actions where I know this is going to require maybe a little bit of extra attention uh, from our team um and uh connecting with my stakeholders internally connecting with my stakeholders externally so keeping in touch with uh, my suppliers and really getting to know uh, how they are organized getting to know uh, who is in what position who is likely to change anytime soon <laughs> okay. yeah great great okay um, let's talk more about, about the work in procurement so for a starter in the industry how it works what are, what is the typical First position, I would say. Yeah, yeah. A, a more typical first position would be like a junior operational uh, purchaser position, uh, I would imagine. Uh, so, and the reason that I think that this is the best place to start is because you're going to be responsible for a number of vessels or in some companies, a number of categories. And you're really going to get to know those categories or those vessels very intensely. Uh, and also geographically, obviously, there's going to be a huge spread with what what suppliers you can use where. Uh, and also, you're going to be very much uh, in touch with your vessels, knowing what the impact is of not having something, okay. knowing what the impact is to the people on board if you cannot supply something. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, what about logistics coordinator? Is it something completely different? Or it has a link? Uh, I think that there's a there's a very strong link there. Eh? So what we consider to be an operational purchaser is actually a, a function that also focuses on planning uh, ahead, really knowing when to store your vessel, uh, consolidating movements that you're going to make, because obviously, like any other company, also our upstream supply chain is being monitored on, on emissions. Eh? So how much emissions we make, how much money we spend, in supplying our vessels. So there's, there's a very strong logistics element to that. And with the logistics coordinator, uh, that's typically that's a little bit the same because you do a lot of ordering and maybe not so much purchasing or procurement, which is a broader term, of course, 
where you also expect a person to maybe know the market, uh, be able to select suppliers and contract them, uh, even though it's uh, for spot uh, uh, typically in purchasing, but logistics coordinators really focus on getting the getting the parts right place, right time. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of career progression in a, in a procurement, what is it? The basically you start like as the purchaser junior. Yeah. And then. Yeah, so for us, uh, how we are built up, because I can't uh, tell you on, on what how other companies have organized themselves, but how we are organized is that we have an operational purchasing layer uh, that really takes care of the day-to-day -day operations of our vessels. Then there's a tactical procurement layer that makes sure that our current supply base and mostly contracted supply base is uh, fully managed so that the performance of those contracts are okay, uh, that if the contracts aren't adhered to, that we also follow up on that. Uh, uh, but also run retendering. So if we see that a contract is expiring, is it going to be worth our while to run a new request for tender to make sure that we're still in par with what the market is offering? And then there's strategic procurement uh, where you really where we've either not even touched upon a category yet. Uh, so that's completely innovative in a way, in the sense that you need to draw the knowledge from our more technical engineering colleagues in and understand uh, the full scope of that category, understanding what price, quantity, quality, uh, behavior and risk really entail then for the specific category and then researching the market to know how you would run that tender, how you would prepare your negotiations. Okay, very clear. Yeah. Uh, only term of educational background, Yes. Is the typical path. Yeah, that's difficult, of course, because we have a very specific procurement uh, educational institute uh, here in Holland, uh, the Navy, uh, quite famous from uh, Arjan van Wele, of course, taking part in that uh, company as well. Uh, but more typically, we tend to look for people with either maritime uh, or logistics economic background uh, for tactical and strategic procurement. It can make a lot of sense if somebody actually also has a little bit of a background in law. It doesn't have to be in depth, uh, but at least you'll have to understand a bit of contract law. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Do you have any uh, anecdotes to share? Uh, during your life in the maritime industry? <laughs> <laughs> That's such a, such a broad question. Uh, I think that dealing with procurement in the maritime industry is rolling with the punches and keep looking ahead. So uh, if uh, it, never a day is going to look the same. And if you're going to be down at every corner because your day doesn't look as you anticipate it, then you're going to have a really tough time in procurement, mm -hmm. in shipping, I think. But simultaneously, that means that you have to keep looking ahead and even as far ahead as possible, really staying ahead of the game to make sure that your team is actually uh, running in more stable waters where they can really excel. Because I think procurement, as usual, is a lot about time. Yeah. If you do stuff last minute, you're not going to be super successful. That's true. That's so true. that would be my anecdote that I would want to share with, uh, with my current uh, peers and also future uh, peers. Great. <laughs> and uh, do you think we have a shortage in the, to find new procurement uh, professional? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. There should be more, in my view, because I think that 40% of your spend being uh, procurement managed might seem like a low number. But uh, where what typically logistics tends to do is discount for any depreciation. So if you're buying heavy assets, which is what shipping companies, shipping, ship owners typically do, that doesn't mean that you know, procurement cannot influence those costs. Uh, and shipping being shipping, it really requires a little bit of a maritime minded or really maritime uh, passionate okay. person uh, to really want to fully understand what costs are for a shipping company. And I cannot stress that enough. Uh, it's, it's, it's really about those five elements that I keep mentioning and not just about price. Okay. Quite interesting. What I would want to say to anyone that is currently either looking for a job, looking for education, uh, what, what you want to do in your life, the maritime industry has been super important to Rotterdam, super important to the Netherlands. And I think it's still as thriving as you would ever come to expect from shipping. Uh, so please explore what it is that this industry has to offer. Uh, because it has the most unique set of people uh, involved, 
the most uh, complex type of setup uh, that you can ever imagine. And I've never been bored a single minute, I think, since I joined the industry. So please, please join. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Eric, for this podcast. It was a pleasure to having you today. Thank and you. Of course, I wish you. It's been day. an honor. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for listening and watching this episode. We are looking forward to bring you more insights from maritime professionals, experts, and students. Do not hesitate to follow the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support means a lot to us and helps us to bring you more content.